I got a UX slash product design internship with Pinterest, which I cover in that video, how I landed the offer. But in this video, I'm going to walk you through the UX portfolio presentation that I gave Pinterest during the interview. And I will do that in three parts. First, I'll walk you through what I presented so you can see the format, you can see the content that I had. And then I'm going to go over the questions that came up during the presentation after I presented uh, or while I was presenting. And lastly, I will give you some thoughts and comments on if I were to look back now, what would I keep an eye on? so that you can iterate your portfolio presentation and land your dream internship. If all that sounds good to you, grab your favorite drink and let's get into it, yo. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Unlike the Waymo presentation, the recruiter did not give me any tips or any preparation materials before I started. So I was basically shooting the dark. But still, I included all the essentials, the problem statements, process, solution, some uh, things that I iterated on. So now, yeah, let's get into part one, the presentation. The first project or one of the two projects that I presented was Flash, this idea journaling app, just like Waymo. And I presented it straight from my website. So you can see this is my portfolio website. I can just scroll and it's very linear. There's no breaks anywhere. And after I landed on the project page, I just quickly go over this is a smart idea incubator it's a journaling app just one line or two to just high level super high level talk about what this is about it's mobile app collecting documenting journaling your ideas and there's a video here of course i did not play it because it didn't make sense to have a jittery low quality video playing over a video call and i also know the call is pretty short it's like half an hour only so i know i couldn't go too in depth that means i would stay a little bit more high level uh, but still go through the process, the problem, the solutions and such. Then I just kept scrolling down, skip past the, the video, the feature introduction, and then straight to, as you know, the problem statements or the context and then the problem statement. So just saying that creative individuals have ideas all the time and it's all random when that could happen. You have no control. So looking at the user flow, you have to capture it fast and uh, if you see how I cross this out, what's remaining is a more linear, more predictable, more controlled flow. And then I went through like the market research and then concluded three things. Notes can be messy. It's, it's mixed with all other things and it's hard to retrieve. And it's inefficient because no products in the market that's, to, that's geared towards or designed for this use case, which is could be my breaking point. And then the input type can be a little, a little bit more fun and playful to spark creativity and inspire you to keep creating along the way. And then the how my we statement, uh, this is the end goal, uh, simple, fast, organized, and who is it for? Creative individuals. And then I did not go into details about the, the exact interviews, but just high level, quickly go over the methods, affinity, di affinity diagrams, same structure interviews, persona development, and then all these beautiful, brilliant, amazing, incredible, phenomenal wireframes in Sharpies and pen or sharpies markers in pen which leads to my two findings use gestures and api integration to be more organized more efficient uh, it helps you further develop your ideas down the road and yeah and then i just blast through really quickly just high level showing yeah this is the process it's like i did testing and then i have some findings for it a b testing quotes from users i develop prototypes i think i click some of these links but i don't think this work anymore framer yeah they keep changing the api framework sucks so just demo a few of these and then i went over to like describe the process of how i developed the, the visual language of it some of the explanations that i had why i make certain decisions of course not reading over any of the text i have in the images but just uh, voice over it and use my cursor to point out can you see my cursor maybe not how certain things are decide, uh, decided and designed and look into the, the thumb zone economics and uh, more explorations on the search result presentation and then the flow diagram these all black i just i think i finished all these in like five or five minutes or so and then i went quickly over back to the the feature presentation which is more important more polished and that's the final a piece of work that I handed off or at least I uh, finished and that's where they can assess me on how good my craft end up being because all the process is rough it's interesting to look at it helps you or it helps me further get to the end state of the design but what is the end state so this is solution 
So make sure when you present, it's the most polished things that you have. Make sure you have this set. So the feature introduction is a high level summary of what that is and what it does and the animation of it. Sneak peek, insert or add, shred to delete, a lot of gestures as you might see. Suggestion, drag and drop, you can flip the card a little bit, uh, playing with that physical playing card metaphor. Quick search, another gesture, interaction, stamping a card, API integration, which you remember from the well, wireframing that I did. Uh, rediscover, help you build along your ideas uh, down the road for some occasions like location, anniversary, or certain connections so that's the high level so that's what i went through with the presentation and i did spend a lot more time going through the details in the solutions and the features rather than the the process I of course did mention yeah we need to include api integration especially to pinterest because it's how that's how idea flows you collect all your pins your interests your mood board your inspirations and then it ties back to this app so you can develop your ideas your process maybe your future startup and company uh, this way and then of course I see the hiring manager says not and not and not when I'm talking about it. So that's a good sign. And then the second project that I presented is Calo. It's the smart shower faucet project that I presented, which you can see from the hello image, you have the mobile app and then you also have the hardware piece that goes onto the wall. So quickly go over, yeah, it's the smart shower faucet, it has the app and it has the faucet piece and I have a video for it, of course. Again, I skipped the video and then I went to jump into the context, uh, which is this is providing a, a way to make them think. So the first question that I pose to ask the room, how often, how many times do you adjust your shower faucet? Think about it when you shower every time. So it kind of sets the tone of the presentation. That's the context. That's where the inspiration comes from. That's a problem that is worth solving because Hint, hint, you are adjusting too many times and wasting water just coming down all the time and just keep turning the faucet and then you burn it like, ouch. Okay, so I skip over solutions and go over more of the, the detail, problem finding, tackling the user flow, looking into the details of how this inefficient, vicious cycle and even have the chance of burning you, but eventually you go shower and then you get out of shower. And then I summarize all those into four things, the unpredict unpredictability part the scolding, the danger of scolding, the high water consumption and a growing concern of water usage. Because when I was doing this project at the time, there's a drought crisis in California. So it ties all together nicely. It's a whole story about uh, shower experience, about water and the environment. And proposing the new flow, quickly go over the, the opportunity of retrofitting it. I try to develop a retrofitting solution that's why I went to Home Depot and get this uh, faucet and take it apart, understand how it works and see where the opportunity might be in terms of retrofitting. What do I have to design in order to have a retrofitting solution? And then some sketches of a physical product, acrylic board prototype, designing the, the, the UI on the device, turning the temperature or setting the temperature and then comparing it to the current temperature and what that visualization is like. And then looking into an opportunity to include an app to enrich the experience of the shower experience. The architecture of the app, wireframes, mockups, and how it will look on the wall in terms of scale, where your hand is, and look into this still pretty okay rendering of the shower space. And then you have all this uh, black color shower head, shower handle faucet next to it. And then of course I go back, scroll, scroll, scroll all the way back to showcase. This is how you interact with it. This is the exploded version of it. This is some of the prototypes that I built. I think I just play these videos like in the background and just let them watch it and I just talk over it. You press it and then it shows you the current temperature. You turn and you set the future temperature and then it just gets to it, things like that. This is a GIF that's auto playing, uh, showcasing uh, how I use a motor instead of a hand adjustment to control the hot water and cold water ratio. This is the, the mixer, the two holes control how much water they flow in. And depending on, the position, depending on the rotation, uh, different amount of hot and cold water will come in. So this is saying how it can be automated in the process to make it more precise, so more predictable, so no burning yourself uh, like that. And then of course, get to the app. I don't think I spend too much time talking about the hardware because I know Pinterest does not make any hardware. So I focus a little bit more time on talking about the, the interface, the UI of the, the hardware and also the, the mobile app aspect of what function it will do. It will synchronize, it will track your usage, it give you uh, stats so you educate yourself 
and then your profile in terms of oh I shower less uh, or I shower more to address the, the drought crisis in California. Again, not really thorough process because there's not enough time to go for it. So more on solution. So you might want to adjust your presentation based on the time you have and if the recruiter give you any information about what to prep. And that concludes the presentation part. So let's get to part two. What questions did they ask me? One question they have, interestingly, because I have a video here for Flash, they asked me to play the video. Hey, can you play the video? So of course I played the video. However, the video I had at that time is not the same one that you see on the presentation or my portfolio, but instead is this one. Of course, a lot more embarrassing, less color correction, and everything just feels a little outdated and unprofessional, even though it has the feel of death. And it's called Flash with that a lightning bolt thing. And it was still using the old design, which is the list view of everything, as you can see. Showcase some gestures and all that. And then in the end, another question that they asked me, oh, is this you in the video? Yeah, it's me in the video, which is an interesting question they ask that has barely anything to do with the presentation, but if they're interested and they ask, hey, that's one question that they asked me. I think those are the only two questions that I got from the hiring manager. And he was relatively chill as I can sense from the presentation. And I don't think there's any question for the shower faucet project, but mainly for the, the idea journaling app, which seems to make sense because the faucet is a hardware project. Pinterest is all digital, so less relevant. And the idea journaling is a lot more closer to what Pinterest is working on as a company. So it all makes sense. And since the questions are so chill and less relevant, which makes sense to go to part three, a hypothetical future iteration. If I were to look back, if I were to present these two projects again to Pinterest specifically with the same 30 minute window time frame, what would I have done differently? What would I keep my eyes on? What would I change? And I do have a few changes to make. First, I will ask the recruiter or the hiring manager if there's anything they particularly wanted to see. Is it a process? Is it a solution or more solution? Less process? More animation? More visual expression? What is it? Any signals I get, it will be very helpful. So I will stick to this game plan from now on. Always ask. And two, I would definitely put these two projects in a slide deck. Likely a keynote so to minimize the scrolling because you know when you scroll, it has motion and since it's a video call, screen sharing, it gets jittery, it gets, it has some delay. You never know what they actually see. So to better control the pace, the presentation, it's better with a slide deck, with a keynote. In addition, since we know the presentation is only 30 minutes long, controlling the pace is essential, is critical. How to do that? I've been a slide deck, slide by slide. You can really quickly go over jumping between each one and control the pace. And next is always have breaks, introduce breaks to ask questions. Pause after problem statement, pause after iteration, pause after one minute elaborating on the process, pause. Putting things in the deck and pause are actually two separate tips I included in a video that I talk about how to present over a video call for your presentation. If you're interested, check it out in the corner or description down below. The last thing I will change in hindsight 2020 is that I will focus a little bit more on the visual execution, the visual presentation. Because I know Pinterest is a very visual driven company. It's like a visual exploration, visual search. So concrete examples being showing more visuals, calls longer on visuals so they can look at it more. Another one explaining why those visual changes are the way they are. So they can understand my thought process for the visuals specifically. So those are the two projects that I presented to Pinterest. And of course, I got an offer from Pinterest. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I know this is only a quick walkthrough of the presentation, but I do plan to record a uninterrupted, elaborate, actual 30 minute presentation that I gave, the exact one, to Pinterest. If you're interested, stay tuned for my Patreon announcement. In the meantime, you can always shoot me an email saying you're interested in joining this potential great membership, and I can put you on the top of the list keep you posted what's upcoming and email you right away when I announce the memberships. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop it in the comment section down below. I read and respond to every comment. Other than a UX portfolio presentation, there are other factors that contribute to a UX design internship offer. And I have used my best design thinking and craft to capture those in these videos for you. Check them out right there. Like and subscribe to support this channel and keep designing a better future. 
See you on the next video. Tschüss.